It is football season, and that means our boy Trevor Maddich is back on the program. Of course, the former BYU center, All-American, NFL player, ESPN College Football Insider. Trevor, welcome back to the program. It smells like game week when we have you on, man. <laughs> I know I'm so excited for the games to start because this offseason, there has been so much drama. We thought the drama was last season, right? And it would ease and be more about football leading into the season. This year with NIL, with conference expansion, with so many different things, it's gone completely nuts. So now it's about time that we actually hear the crack of the pads. Absolutely. And we will Saturday night, BYU against Arizona in Las Vegas. Let's talk about uh, a myriad of subjects. Let's start with Jaron Hall being named the starting quarterback. What was your reaction to that? I think that it was a good choice among good choices. The thing about Jaron Hall is that he is, you know, watching him when he played when he was healthy, he has a big arm. He's got the ability to push the ball down the field, which BYU wants to do. He's got the ability to run and extend plays even more than you would see with Zach Wilson. And I think there may be more dedicated runs with him involved than there would have been with Zach Wilson. So I think that's an interesting dynamic. We'll see what they decide to do with that dynamic when they play Arizona this weekend. But then also, he's so calm. And this is what really stands out about Jaron to me. In the pocket, there'll be all kinds of chaos breaking around him. But if he doesn't have to go anywhere, he doesn't. His feet are still until he starts to move his feet so he can scan the field. When it's time to go, bam, he's gone. But that calmness in the pocket, I think, leads to the ability to make big plays, whereas some quarterbacks would go back in the pocket, something would happen, and their feet are jittery, and their accuracy suffers, and they're gone. So I'm really interested to see how Jaron does with that calmness when he is the starter and not just a guy coming in as a backup. Trevor, in terms of the entire team in this first game, what do you want to learn about BYU? I want to learn how the new receiving core looks without Dax Mill. I think that the they've got some new guys in the Pakua, the Nakua brothers and some others that I think are going to be very, very good, and they will really add. I want to see how Isaac Rex will be at tight end. I want to see how the offensive line will be. They lost some outstanding players, including their great left tackle. And so we'll see how they replace it. And we'll find out in this game how well they're doing because Arizona's defensive coordinator, Don Brown, is known for blitzing like crazy from everywhere with reckless abandon. And that's something that's, that's you can pick up later in the season. But in the first game, the speed of it and the uncertainty of where it's coming from is a real problem. So I'm interested to see them. And on defense, I'm very interested to see how the pass rush does. That's one of the things that they have really tried to build this year is an organic pass rush where they don't have to blitz. If they do have to blitz, they've got a great linebacking core. It'll be interesting to see how they do. But if they can get an organic pass rush from the defensive line this year better than last year, then they've got a real chance to do some things. Listen, if it's processed uh, pass rush, I'm fine with that too. I just want sacks, man. It doesn't matter, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you love sacks, Jeremy. That's, uh, that's the thing. <laughs> but they need to because their corners are quite good. Yeah. And we'll find out again in this Arizona game because Arizona has a pretty good secondary. They've got a lot of guys that can run in the secondary. Um, excuse me. BYU has a lot of guys that can run in the secondary. Arizona has a lot of guys that can run at wide receiver. And so if the pass rush doesn't get there, then we're going to find out a lot about this. BYU secondary because Arizona has Pac-12 caliber skill people running around. So this pass rush will be an important factor in this opener. Uh, you, you got uh, Will Plummer and Gunnar Cruz, two freshman quarterbacks going for Arizona, the two quarterback system. Uh, when I saw that, uh, and I already felt like BYU was going to win this game, Trev, I felt uh, even more confident in BYU's ability to win. It's uh, The Cougars are a 10-plus point favorite, depending on who you ask. What are your thoughts on that? The two quarterback system? And BYU being a heavy favorite. Well, two-quarterback system is when you want it to be a two-quarterback system. I think Arizona right now is not sure which guy they want to start. So they're going to carry the quarterback competition into the regular season. And that's not necessarily a sign of weakness. We've seen Nick Saban at Alabama do that, where one guy doesn't take over the quarterback job. And so he just rotates them in the first few games of the season to see who actually earns the trust of the players. So I don't think it'll be a problem for BYU's defense with two different styles of quarterbacks to have to prepare for because they've been facing that in their offseason and summer practices the entire uh, offseason with the quarterback competition that they've had on their own offense because you've got different guys that have different skill sets 
that were competing for the BYU starting job. And I think that will bode very well for their ability to deal with whatever those two quarterbacks Arizona will throw at them will be able to do. I've been very excited to get your opinion on this question. Obviously, we're gearing up for game week, but the other story we're following with BYU is Big 12 expansion and BYU over the last, you know, several days has been mentioned as a prime candidate to to be involved in uh, Big 12 expansion if that's what they decide to do. Uh, I'm curious your opinion, what you're hearing, but also with everything going on right now, do you think this is BYU's time to, to go all in on trying to get into the Big 12? It would be a good time to do that. I'm not sure what BYU's thoughts are. I do know that as an independent, they're viable. We do know, though, that if they enter the Big 12, there are all kinds of good things that could happen, including to help stabilize the Big 12 and increase their their television revenue potential. I think they're a good fit right now more than ever because BYU is a legitimate national team. They have a national fan base, really an international fan base with the reach of BYU TV and with the members of the church who like to watch BYU football and with other people who are not members of the church but have just learned that when that why comes out onto the field, they're about to see some exciting football. So BYU is a program that can expand the Big 12 or any conference's footprint without having to go geographically too far afield. And I think that's one of the reasons that BYU would be a good fit for the Big 12, especially right now. And the Big 12 for BYU, if that conference can solidify and stabilize, they can remain a Power Five conference. And that is very, very important for a variety of reasons, especially since we don't know exactly what's going to be happening with the playoff now. We thought there would be a 12-team playoff. They had a proposal on the table that they were negotiating for it. But now, with the expansion of the SEC and with the alliance between the Big Ten, Pac-12, and ACC, no one knows how things are going to look going forward. And the more stabilized you can be, the better when those things do come down the pike. What you want out of BYU football determines the path you're hoping the Cougars seek, right? Some people love a tough schedule almost more than they love the game. Some people want BYU to win 10-plus games or whatever. Some people want BYU to be in a Power 5 league, but that's probably going to yield a team that isn't contending for a conference title. But independence gives you autonomy. The AC would give you expanded playoff opportunity if you win the league. It all kind of depends what you want, right? So there's some BYU fans, Trevor, that are like, no, independence is our thing. We don't need the Big 12. Uh, Shep and many others, myself included, think, hey, no, I think being in Power 5 League is the best ever. But we don't know how stable it's going to be, like you said. What's your opinion of where, what you want out of BYU football and ultimately where you ho hope the Cougars go? I think there's a happy medium, but I think in a Power 5 conference, BYU would do just fine because then they would be able to recruit the kind of bulk at depth. And it's the depth that they need. They've had the bulk. It's the depth that they want to continue to build. And in a Power 5 conference, they can recruit more to that. But we've seen them as an independent have a lot of depth, especially on the offensive line of guys who can play as backups good enough to be a starter at BYU. And that's one of the things that we'll see in this opener against Arizona. This BYU offensive line needs to replace a lot of guys, but they're doing it with guys that have played a lot of football that are really talented. But being able to recruit to a Power 5 scenario would help them with that. Uh, I don't like the idea of BYU playing the kind of schedule that they played last year all the time with no Power 5 schools on it. In a normal year, they'll play a whole bunch of Power 5 schools. And keep this in mind, can BYU compete there? Well, recruiting is an independent outside the Power Five. They went out and they beat Wisconsin. They went out and beat Tennessee. A few years before that, they went to, to Jerry World in Dallas and beat Oklahoma, right? They, they have shown that they can compete in one of those one-game playoffs with those teams and that they can compete in a schedule that is full of Power Five teams. So I think joining a Power Five schedule will help that recruiting. But continuing to compete and then to win those games, even as an independent, would allow them still to have a, a schedule that's tough enough to be considered for a playoff berth if they went out and still be independent. So it does kind of depend on what you want, but I don't think it's an either or scenario. Either we win games or we play more power five. BYU can win games playing power five. You mentioned a couple of times BYU looking to replace production that left to go to the NFL. And you mentioned specifically Dax Milne. Uh, I want to ask you, with the NFL cut down, by tomorrow, NFL teams have to get down to their 53-man rosters. You obviously know the Washington football team very well. What do you think Dax's chances of making uh, Washington's roster are? Early in the, in the training camp, they were slim. 
because there were such so many guys at wide receiver. I mean, so many good receivers that Washington had to choose from, and it seemed like it would take a minor miracle for Dax to make it out of the 53-man roster. But he has played so well that I think he's played his way onto somebody's roster. As a matter of fact, he's played so well that I think Washington might be leery about waving him and then bringing him back to the practice squad. Because if they do that, somebody else can uh, claim him off of waivers before they get him back to the practice squad. And I think he's played well enough for other teams to look at him as a guy that they would want to claim off of waivers. So he actually has made himself much more valuable than a lot of people thought he might. And in this last preseason game against Baltimore, they gave him a lot of chances. And he performed. He did well. I mean, on one of them, it looked like a, a pass from Zach Wilson at BYU. He ran a, a go route up the right sideline. He left about a four-foot alley between himself and the sideline, and the defender was just inside of him, as is normally the case. Quarterback threw a perfect ball up high, out into the alley, right onto the boundary, and at the last second, Dax adjusted into that space and made the catch. That's the kind of savvy play and consistent play that you need from a guy like your sixth wide receiver or fifth wide receiver. He also showed he could do well on special teams, both as a returner and as a cover guy. So Dax has done very well. And I think a lot of people were surprised that he would do that well, especially since he was in a place where he had to come from so far behind to even be considered for a roster spot. And let's finish with this. Uh, Zach Wilson with the Jets. You played for the Jets in 1991. Can he overcome history with the Jets there? <laughs> yes. I think what's happening now with the Jets Finally, it's reasonable for long-suffering Jets fans who are so used to bait and switch to be legitimately excited. And, and Zach is the first reason, right? He is showing what he showed in college in the training camp environment, in the preseason game environment so far. He is showing off the field what he showed in college, which is his leadership and his preparation. I mean, when he was drafted, as the other draft picks came in, he would call them on the phone and say, hey, welcome to the Jets, man. Let's be the class that turns this thing around you. And all, all of a sudden, immediately creates that kind of a, of a togetherness. And he's continued to do that with the veterans. They've surrounded him with a much improved offensive line and much improved skill players. Watch for Elijah Molden. He's a wide receiver out of Ole Miss. Rookie draft choice. I think he and Zach are going to have uh, quite a rookie year together. The thing that he has to show is that he can do it from the preseason into the regular season. He did play a lot of second string defensive defenses and he didn't play a whole lot of first team defenses. So we'll need to see if he can carry that forth when the defense has got its best players in the game and is game planning for him specifically. But the thing is pretty much every quarterback in the NFL is in the exact same position. And some of them didn't perform very well, especially some of the other first round rookies being in the exact same position as Zach Wilson. Now he's got to take it to the next level. He's already won the preseason. Now he takes it to the next level and he has everything required to be able to have success as a rookie. I think we just found our 2021 BYU Sports Nation theme to the next level. Trevor, we appreciate mm -hmm. the time, man. It's game week. Always fun to talk with you. Good luck with everything on ESPN, man. Thanks, guys. Trevor Maddich of ESPN joining BYU Sports Nation. Seriously, talking to Trev means it's game week. It's, it's time. I always love talking to Trev. It's time. And he has great insight on things. Um, so, Both and college now, and pros, you well, can get the insight. We it's haven't great. talked to him a ton about the NFL. Right. Now BYU has a bunch of NFL guys, which best of luck to everybody. Uh, you know, uh, already had you know one cut earlier today we mentioned. But, yeah, it's, it's uh, tough. But let's go. Let's go, man. Football season, baby. All right.